How's it going, Teal Boys? It is rivalry week, uh, and App State might be 5-5, five and five, but I honestly don't like our odds all that much. We looked at this at the end of the last episode, but these guys look like they're going to be pretty dominant. Um, they might have five losses, but they are kind of interesting. Uh, they played Washington State, which will be interesting. Um, not the best Pac-12 team. Not the best loss for them. Overtime win. Two overtime losses against a good Georgia Southern and an okay Georgia State. And following that Georgia State game has been back-to-back -back close losses. Three points in each against Troy and Louisiana Lafayette. Um, they're hoping to turn that around. They obviously do not want a four-game losing streak. Uh, we just took a loss. So we're going to try to bounce back from that. But this is a big one. Uh... You know, only a couple games to play on the season. We are going to go on the road and see if we can come out against the rivals victorious. We picked up a ton of commits after the, uh, you know, relatively disappointing visits that we had scheduled there against Texas State. Um, but now we have probably some more points that we can focus on other guys and we'll see if we can continue to pick stuff up. But as always, you know, we're going to just make sure that we even have a chance to pick these guys up. And, you know, some of these will be tough. Sydney McRae uh, is 64% locked. We are 2,500 points behind, but we could be gaining about 90 points per week. And there haven't been visit visits scheduled. Um, we just have to hope kind of for the best here that we'll be doing okay. Now, scrolling through, I've gone ahead and kind of reallocated the points. It looks like for most of these guys that we're in the lead with, we either just had our visit and no other teams were too worried about because they've had their visits, or we're in a relatively close battle, but we still have a visit to come in that, uh, that final game on week 15. So things are looking pretty solid for a lot of stuff. The guys near the bottom of the board are going to be tough to get. I've given some points to Sidney McRae. He is a 76 overall defensive end, which would be massive to get. I don't expect it. Maybe if he doesn't get locked before the end of the season, we can give like all our points in the offseason to him. But uh, I think that we're in a relatively good spot. And now with only 13 scholarships remaining, let's see. How does our class rank? We are 86. Uh, nine two stars, a one star, and two three stars. And always, I'm curious to see at the top, you've got Notre Dame, um, three five stars, eight four stars. Just kind of ridiculous. Oklahoma, 12 three stars. Seems interesting, uh, but they also have two five stars to, to back that up. Penn State in the four spot without any five stars. And then the one that I always like to see as well, what's kind of like a weird team with some five stars? Do we have any this season? Kentucky with one is a little unusual, uh, but nothing too crazy in terms of the spread for five stars so so far. We had, I think, another kind of chaotic week. Uh, previous number one, Oklahoma, has fallen a uh, four-point game against Kansas State. Uh, Auburn lost to Florida, who's now up to number three. Auburn drops from seven down to ten. Cincinnati loses to UCF, so that's their second game this season. They were doing well for a while, but it's kind of the, the wheels have come off. Uh, Nebraska loses to Penn State. Minnesota loses to Wisconsin. Tulane loses to Houston. And Georgia Southern now receiving votes. So uh, Arizona State and Miami also dropping out, but it went from us being maybe the Sun Belt team that was going to be ranked to Georgia Southern and that's maybe a little bit disappointing. However, maybe with a good rivalry win, we start to get those votes again. But regardless, it certainly doesn't uh, feel good when, when we lose to a not good Texas State team. Uh, nothing changed in the Heisman watch list this past week. And we are actually, I believe, still projected to play in the same bowl game. I feel like we were looking at the RNL carries New Orleans Bowl. Um, but now our matchup looks pretty solid against an 8-3, and 6-1 in conference UAB. And looking at some New Year's 6 games, uh, you know, I kind of like this. Wisconsin, Oregon in the Rose Bowl. You got Notre Dame, Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Oklahoma, Florida in the Sugar Bowl. The Cotton Bowl will be Northwestern, Oklahoma State. Uh, Northwestern 7-4, but still top 20. 
In the Orange Bowl, they're looking at Texas, Alabama. That's an interesting matchup. And then in the national championship, it's looking, I don't know how this is going to work, but they're projecting North Carolina Clemson. Obviously, I think one of these two teams will lose and uh, the only two unbeaten Power 5 schools left uh, in the country, both coming out of the ACC. So obviously, I think one of those will lose. The question is, who's it going to be and who would take that spot? Um, Texas is fourth. But Florida being in third, I guess, you know, with Alabama in fifth, SEC championship game could matter. So uh, I'm curious. There's still a lot that could change in these potential bowl matchups. Now, the CFB revamped mod does change a lot of the uh, graphics in the game, uh, including this one, the bowl projection. They make it look like there's a college football playoff. It's not a part of it yet. I believe that that's something that they're looking into. Um, but unfortunately, we will just have a BCS National Championship as our natty in this game. On the road, we're going to go with the All-Whites. And we can see Appalachian State has some, uh, some cool uniforms. They've got the gloves, and they have a lot of alternates. So I'm not sure what we'll choose. Um, and we, let's see, can we see some of the... Yeah, we, they've got the white. We can see the white jersey, the away. Um... It's, it's, it's looking pretty solid. I, I like what they've done with the uh, Mountaineers here. But seeing as we're going in as the team wearing all white, we're going to have uh, the Mountaineers wear all black and have an interesting matchup as we head on the road here. Now, uh, they are an 83 overall to our 77. Uh, a bigger edge on offense and a closer one on defense, 82 to 80. But this is not looking great for us as we go in. I mean, we just struggled against a worst texas state team a texas state team that might be one of the worst that we've played all season and we're going from that to playing a good appalachian state so let's hope for the best and see if we can come out on top so again as we look at their rankings a pretty solid offense top 40 plus across the board with a mediocre defense by the numbers so statistically our defense looks better and our offense looks worse but you never know they've got guys visiting we'll try to ruin those days um oof. A lot better uh, top players on the squad. They're looking high 80s into the low 90s, whereas, again, we're still kind of that mid, maybe a little bit high uh, 80s, but mostly mid and below. But how about this uh, helping us out? Uh, right guard probable. Left end out for a week. Quarterback out for a week. And the left tackle also out for a week. So <laughs> this is really rough. Maybe the reason why this team has lost three straight potentially four if we can get the win today is uh they've got a bunch of guys injured but next week hopefully they're able to bring those back so if we do beat them maybe they can bounce back and make it to a bowl game so here we are uh on the road at app state tails never fails we're going to kick this ball off and we'll see uh how we get on with the defense as always biscardi has this game underway and the, this is a returnable ball he's going to bring it out a couple yards deep of the end zone and that's not a bad return, 26 yards. Now, realistically, it probably would have made sense to take the fair catch in the end zone. You would have been a yard further up the field as the defense slaughters on first down for a loss of three. And after a, you know, bad run on first down, they're going to go five wide, expecting them to go to the air. And our coverage looks not good enough. Spillum's able to stop the first down, but they get 13 yards there. They're in the hurry up, so I expect this quarterback to throw. And, ooh, we brought the blitz, and he got the pass off, but Spillum's there to deflect it fourth and inches. That's going to put Diggs in the backfield, and the defense will hold the first time out. So uh, maybe the start of what could be an impressive win. The punt is away. It's a returnable ball, and Diggs will field it. He's got some room to work with. This is insane. Just the punter to beat... The block digs the 20. Oh my gosh, the 10. He's in. 78 yards on the punt return. And to open up this game, our defense is going to go back-to-back -back drives because the offense doesn't need to see the field when the special teams does it. Digs with his fourth punt return of the year. And just like that, it's a 7 nothing ball game. Uh, <laughs> incredible. So Biscari will put this one now into the end zone and I imagine that they take the touchback 
And we'll see now if the uh, the defense can get it done two drives in a row. This looks like a draw. It is a draw. And again, it's a loss of two yards. So two runs and negative five yards for Appalachian State. Let's see if we can get them into another third down. They're going to hand this one off. Gallagher can't get there. No, he does diving for it. And he managed is to force the third down. We're going to bring pressure here on third one. I'm calling this a run up the middle. I'm ignoring the tight end. He goes to the edge. The gap's there, and it's a massive one. It's a foot race to the end zone. Can Strong get there? Well, running back kind of run around a little bit, but he, he breaks the tackle, and Marcus Williams goes 66 yards to the house on third and one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is not optimal. It wouldn't be a rivalry game if there weren't big plays all over the place. And that's uh, two within the last minute of the game play that we've seen. As Diggs will bring this one out from the end zone to get a return. Gets us decent field position for the offense's first drive. We'll see if today I can manage to wrangle in the offense and get positive yards. Uh, McCall, I don't think I needed to do that spin move, but keeps it on the read option and gets five. I know that I said I would be benching Grayson, but, uh, you know, we're just going to continue to give him chances. Maybe a mistake. As Maribel can't pick up any yards on that second down carry. And now we will go to the air on third and five. Latushko drops the ball. So we're going to be forced to punt this one away and the Mountaineers hold. We could try to cheese this one a little bit, but that's not something I'm a huge fan of. Although, <laughs> return man misses it. That ball is going to be down. I'm going to wait here. I'm going to wait here. It's getting closer and closer to the goal line. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit of a bug with the game, but it just ever so slightly sliding towards the end zone. And so we've got these guys in a very dangerous position inside their own five. The handoff's there, and the tackle is met at the line of scrimmage, so looking good there. Second and ten now. Again, big plays matter in these games, and if we can continue to get to, Oh, no. If we can continue to get them, that would be great, although just like that... It's another big run for the running back, and they have 93 rushing yards on a uh, small amount of touches. I could have told you um, when we got them near the end zone that they were about to have a big play, but why spoil it? Uh, that's just my luck. If we have a chance for a safety, we won't get it. The defense gets back to business, though, and only allows a yard there on that first down. They will hand this one off, and that's another good stop as he's lost uh, probably a half a yard, and it's third and long. Expecting the pass out of this five wide sets. They go to the air on third and nine, and towards the sideline, he's just inside. Zach Crosby with a big first down. That one's a little bit disappointing. Mountaineers nearing midfield is, oh my gosh, I don't think he meant to lead his receiver like that, but it worked out perfectly, getting him some momentum forward. So Zach Thomas now is three of four through the air as this team is driving well. A little misdirection, I think that was. Goes for two yards. And on second down, we're going to bring a little blitz. They hand it off. Gunter, good job standing him up and forcing that uh, tackle, getting him out of bounds and causing the third down. The biggest problem is that this running back now has 10 carries for 100 yards. We can't allow... A 10-yard average, and that's a pass. Oh, I, I mishit the button. Christian Wells, 35 yards to the end zone. Zach Thomas now, 4 of 5. After that first drive, this offense is cooking. If we continue to have uh, offensive woes into next season, things are not going to be looking good. But if we continue to have digs, things will be good. Not the, not the greatest return still gets us out past the 25, and... You know, always just a threat, though. Offense really just needs to click as we will go to the air on first down. And I don't feel comfortable with this at all. McCall running. Makes a man miss. Back juke spin stays on his feet. And, oh, I didn't mean to spin out of bounds there, but we got 12 yards out of nothing on that play. Hey, maybe that's how we need to be using Grayson is just uh, by allowing him to be a threat on the ground as he hands it off on the read option. We lose two yards. But as big of a threat as he may be on the ground, he's not the best through the air, although finds Latushko on the quick little slant for seven yards in the third and five. We'll see if we can pick up the third down here. They're not really bringing any pressure. Over the middle, we have Javon highly wide open. 
And we cross the 50 with a, another first down, 15 yards on that play. And so I guess that's the end of the first quarter. I didn't realize that the clock was coming down. So we go into the second down a touchdown, but with the ball and getting the ball to start the third quarter. Um, but just big plays allowed is not good. Our defense does really well until they give up that home run. And that's just not going to get it done in this game. So got to shore up those big plays and I think we'll be fine. Second and six now. We go to the air. Again, I have to just feel like I need to get outside the pocket. They're running away from a call. Just didn't see him take off, and we get another 12 yards on the ground. Uh, my worry is that he's going to fumble or maybe take an injury, but, um, you know, it's working right now, and we need to get points when we can. And, you know, worst case scenario, we always have Fred Payton. <laughs> the counter. Uh, Marable makes the spin works that time, and just like that, we're inside the red zone with an 11-yard carry. That was a fantastic move. We're going to give it right back to CJ as we are inside the 15. And there was some blocking, but he gets chased down be from behind to pick up two. <laughs> it's never a great sign when the offense has a total of 66 yards, but we're looking to increase that. A speed option here could be a risky play. McCall will keep it and we'll slide him down for a manageable third down. I'm going to say that this is four down territory. Not going for it on fourth down. Last game really burns but we find isaiah likely for that first and goal so hopefully we don't have to have that conversation not expecting this to go great we're going to give it to jones on the fullback dive and he's just going to get back to the line of scrimmage but nothing else i'm not the most confident about this play but we'll try the toss see if we can get to the edge of the blocking not holding up maribel's gonna lose five yards they were all over that play and now it's third and goal we need to go to the air from here. We need McCall to be on point, and we need him potentially to find Maribel, who holds on to it, but he's down at the one-yard line. Fourth and goal. We're going to go for this, but it should not be that difficult for us to get in. Uh, McCall looking for the QB sneak. Fourth and goal. He gets in over the line. No problem, and we're back to a tie ball game midway through the second quarter. Defense has not been great so far in the game. Expecting a run on first down. They actually go to the air and just like that, it's 29 yards to Malik Williams. Oh man, this is just big game or big plays all over the place as Zach throws that one away just after the snap. Now on second down, we're going to go with the safety blitz. So if they go deep, okay, it would have been bad. They were looking at the screen, but the blitz forces them to throw it away and we've got a third down. Really hoping to get this stop and force them to either go for it or kick the uh, long field goal. But no, they've got Williams wide open. <laughs> what a block. Oh my gosh, we got absolutely destroyed. Malik Williams takes it to the house. Just like that, App State back up a touchdown. I want it. Look at, look at how destroyed we get on this play. I've never seen a man go flying quite like that, but just dominating. Well... I mean, this is going to be a, a battle. It seems like neither team really doing a great job on defense. We each have a stop here and there, but is it enough as <laughs> digs with a not good return on that one? Two minutes and 32 seconds before halftime. We're going to be looking to the air a lot on this drive as I see it over the middle. Our square, Sam Denmark holds on to it. The blocking downfield is impeccable. Sam Denmark's not going to be caught. It's a one-play touchdown drive for the Chanticleers. 83 yards to the house. Sam thankfully held on to that ball, but just like that, it's tied up. And man, is this a rivalry game or what? Big plays all over the place. So after we burn only 12 seconds off the clock, the Mountaineers come back out to take control of the ball with not a whole lot of time left before the half. And I got to say, oh, that was bad for me. No, 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 no. Pearson going deep on this one. <laughs> He's got a 48-yard reception. I was about to say before the play that this is bad that we keep having these really quick touchdowns because our defense has been on the field for so much of this half, but... Uh, I didn't have time before they came up with another big play. And just like that, it's another one, 24-yard rush, and it's a first and goal. This is not working how one would expect. <laughs> Certainly not going well. So on first and goal, they will go to the air. And that's a touchdown to Jalen Virgil. Oh, my goodness. What a high-scoring second quarter. Zach Thomas, 8 of 11 through the air. 
And with just under two minutes, we will get the ball back again. No, they're taking a look at it. Let's see. Was he... What, what are they looking at? Two two feet in bounds? He, he could have had more if he was really worried, but... Uh, interesting call by the refs to look at that. I don't really understand why that happened, but... Gives our defense a little bit more chance to breathe, and this is a very returnable ball for Diggs, who doesn't quite have the blocking, but makes it work anyways, and Diggs, still on his feet, gets to the 50. Midfield to start this drive for the offense. This might end up being one of the highest scoring second quarters that we will ever see, as we'll go quick over the middle to Brown there and pick up a first down, and I think we're going to go with a little hurry up here. The call is hot on this game, which is good news. And this is a timing throw. Denmark, oh no, it's picked off. So much for him being hot. Denmark, uh, can't get there. McCall knocks him down, and this could get bad. If they're able to score in this minute and a half, we'll be down two going into the locker rooms, and that would be detrimental, to say the least. This is, uh, it's honestly big play after big play. We're seeing almost nothing that's... Uh, small or, or insignificant so far in this one and that's gonna be another big first down another broken tackle oh my gosh tiptoeing the sidelines Malik Williams can't keep it in and uh man his fourth catch uh, 107 yards already on this game that could have been six the man coverage isn't working well the zone isn't working all that well and <laughs> they do it again Virgil almost with the first down App State takes their first time out and the blitz has to start coming. If we don't get pressure on this quarterback, we're in big trouble. Uh, he scrambles, and... Gosh, Zach Thomas doing it all. 11 yards there. App State took their second timeout, and we're going to see what we can do as they will hand this one off. Not enough for the first down, but still six yards too many. See if we can bring some pressure on second and four. Under a minute to go now. They hand it off again. He's into the end zone. Marcus Williams Jr., eight yards to the house, 35 to 21, a minute to go. You know, if, if we could just get another score on the half here, I would be fine with it, but that is not good that we give up a pick and they score off of it. Diggs again doing Diggs things, gets us out past the 30, almost to the 35. We've got 50 seconds in all three timeouts here. Just don't want to make a big mistake like we did on the last drive. There's Cameron Brown for a quick first down, and we will be in the hurry up this whole time. Going to the play that we threw the pick on last time. I don't see the route. There it is over the middle. Can we find Javon Hiley? Oh, that's on me. Bad user. There's no reason that shouldn't have been a catchable ball, but I just kind of moved him a little bit out of the right direction, and it doesn't look good for us. However... We're going right back to him. Javon Hiley doesn't drop it that time. Can't break the tackle, and we'll take our first time out as we are inside the red zone with 32 seconds to go. So we make up for the miss the first time there. It looks like they're bringing pressure on this one. I'm going to just have Isaiah Likely go on the seam, and Likely is wide open in the end zone. Can we find him? We can. 15 yards to the house. There's still time on the clock. 29 seconds, but it's back to a one-score game here. It's been an absolutely insane second quarter. Hopefully we can just hold on at this point. Oh, I left the running back wide open. I didn't think he was coming out on the route. I was trying to defend that little crossing route. I get a first down and it stops the clock. We're going to bring some pressure. Rushing five on this first down. 20 seconds to go now. We hit the quarterback as he's throwing and Bush gets beat. Oh, <laughs> we get bossed. And this man saw the run inside the 10, stiff-arming his way forward to inside the 5, 59 yards. And they're going to go hurry up here with 9 seconds to go. I imagine if they don't get it here, they take a timeout and kick the field goal. Block is moving, though. They need to get the playoff. And there's the running back in for 6 with a couple of seconds left. Oh, my goodness. We have no defense today. 3 seconds left. In the uh, half here, we'll field it. And we're trying something. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Tried to go with the little lateral to see if we could get something going, but it doesn't work, and it's going to be 28-42 as we head into the locker rooms. We will get the ball. Oh, just disappointing that we just could not stop them there at the end of the half. Uh, 
maybe, maybe something will go right as we go into the third quarter. Appalachian State being forced to kick this one off. And, of course, I'm bringing it out with Diggs. The question is, will it be enough? Blocking, oh, not quite there. Close to getting the corner. Bad field position for the offense now. Our passing was so-so in the first half. We're going to go back to it. And I don't mind going with easy little dump-offs if it means that we're going to get six yards of play. This is the first play in quite a while where it feels like Grayson's been kind of on his game. He'll keep it here. Spin move works. and <laughs> He took a big shot but picked up 13 yards. And we'll go to the air again on first down. Oh, the coverage is crazy. I can't get it to him. No way. I was late to find it. Javon Hiley. Oh, had a massive step on his man and the ball was way underthrown. Lucky that that one wasn't picked off. I keep making these mistakes at the wrong time. Looks like they want to bring pressure, which I don't like. Let's uh, bring Likely in motion, and we're going to run away from where that pressure's going. And Maribel, decent little second down carry there. Gives us a third and two. Maybe a little bit risky, but on this third down, we will go with the counter. Maribel gets north for the first down. And we cross midfield. This is a very big drive for us, and it's working well so far. Give it to CJ again on this first down across the 50. And that works pretty well, although there's a flag. I got to imagine this comes against us. Oh my gosh, that could be a drive killer. Latushko gets called for the hold. Drops us back to a first and 16. And now I don't know what to do. We take a massive sack. I was way too far back in the pocket there. Just didn't have enough time to get the throw I wanted off. And uh, this, is, this is bad news. Well, we'll try to make this a manageable third down at the very least by finding Fountain there and gives us a third and 17 to work with. And this is uh, what I'm going to call four down territory. So if we don't get it all here, it's okay. But Denmark oh, just had his route red and this one is dangerous. Oh my gosh, he just broke two tackles. McFarlane needs to get there. He gets blocked and it's a pick six. App State is up three scores in the third quarter. This is disastrous now. Second interception for Grayson McCall. I just... It just keep, can't keep happening, right? We got to get better on offense eventually. This is going to be a devastating loss. Yes, we knew that they were very good coming in. But they're five and five. We got to be able to do a little bit better. Diggs. Oh, great blocking to start this return. He's in a foot race. Oh my gosh, that man is so fast. <laughs> he got us to the 50. Uh, with how quick that guy is, there's zero chance we take it to the house, though. McCall cooling off a little bit after the decent end of the half. We'll go with a quick little handoff to Greg Latushko, and that'll give us a second and five. And this seems like a good a time as any to run the read option. Maribel getting it with some blockers, finds a cap. And Maribel does a great job picking up a big chunk there. First down. We're going to try to sit in here. There's Latushko open. And he's got another first down for us inside the red zone. Only two minutes left in the third quarter already. I'm feeling a massive sense of urgency. This is going to be a big blitz. We're going to get rid of it quickly to Isaiah Likely. And we're going to go hurry up here. We need to be moving the ball. Uh, and we need to be doing it quickly. McCall's got the touchdown inside the 10, diving for the end zone. Back to a 14-point game, and I think it's time, honestly, for the onside kicks if we want to win this. My thought process on this is that the defense has shown that they aren't going to be able to stop these guys. So we need to steal possessions wherever possible. The onside kicks are good a good chance as any to do that. Oh my gosh, a massive bounce. Their guy comes down with it. Um, but... I mean, if we can just get one or two, or if we get a pick, we could be right back in this. But we need something. Expecting some runs to start this drive off. They're going to put a man in motion. And this is a play action. Wide open Williams. He's been eating us alive all day. He poked that tackle, but we knocked him out of bounds. But it's only after he picks up 26 yards on that one. Um, they go back to Marcus Williams there and pick up three. Heck, I would be happy to hold these guys to a uh, field goal on this one, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. This is a run. Gallagher stretching it out, pulls him down third and four. One more stop, we can hold him to three. Not sure what to expect 
from the offense at this point. They're going to go with the option. I'm going to get out there with Gallagher. We're there to stand up Williams and knock him out of bounds after a gain of yard. Fourth and three. The defense has held well enough. We'll see if we can get the stop here. I doubt it. Actually, pretty close from uh, my AI teammates to blocking that one. But the kick is through. 52 to 35 with a minute left in the third. Oh, this is this is big. Diggs fielding the return. He's got decent blocking again. He's got us out past the 30. And we are fully uh, in hurry-up mode for the rest of this game. McCall gets a good couple of blocks there. Slides down for a first down. My hope is that they bring some crazy pressure on one of these. Over the middle, there's Latushko for another first down. Going to the air again on a first down. I'm going to roll outside the pocket and scramble with this one. I don't trust McCall to make these throws right now, so we're going to limit it. And every yard that we can pick up uh, on the ground will be incredibly useful. Second and four. We'll go to the air. Oh my gosh, my first read was an open, and now I don't really know where to look. I'm throwing this one away. I just can't risk throwing a pick there. 50% on the day for our third down conversions. This one's four yards to go. We will go to the air. Over the middle, we have Latushko. Greg stays in bounds. Picks up the first down, and uh, we need to go hurry up again. We need to do whatever we can to eliminate this lead uh, before the fourth quarter comes to pass. So we will go to the air again. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. There it is. He comes up, and Sam Denmark drops the pass. Oh, he was in the end zone. He hurts us again. Sam had a beautiful touchdown catch earlier in the day screws that one up and now it's third and ten after a bad pass from me this drive should have already been over but we're still out on the field hoping to pick up the first down and oh, Latushko came down with that not an interception we can get another playoff again trying to do as much as we can before the quarter break we find Javon Hiley that's another first down we can get another playoff first and goal Trying to get as much as we can here. Over the middle, there's Latushko, and he can't hold on to it. Incomplete. Second and goal. That was in the end zone, too. This is going to be the final play of the third quarter. We're going to go with the read option. McCall keeps it. He's got the blocking, and Grayson McCall scores the touchdown. Our deficit has decreased. It's going to be 10 points here as we go into the fourth quarter. So... The rivalry game comes down to this. It's a two-possession game heading into the fourth quarter. We're going to get continue to try these onside kicks. If the D gets another stop, that's going to be massive too. Now, you'll, you'll see that I'm always going bottom right on my onside kicks. This is just what I've found works the best for me. We're looking for maybe a little bit less of the power than that. I'm typically going for the half power, and we recovered it. Jordan Morris, the ball bounced around their feet. They couldn't get it, and just like that, the onside kickers recovered. In down 10 to start this fourth quarter, we get the ball back. This is absolutely massive. Going with the counter to start it off to Marable, who gets a little bit of room and gets us to midfield with a five-yard carry. This is absolutely massive, as right there in the middle we have Latushko. Not sure how they didn't cover him, but that's a quick 15 yards. Grace McCall now 18 of 27, as we'll go to the air on a play action, and we're going to scramble. Don't often roll out to the left, but it works that time, and we get out of bounds after a pickup of 12. The offense is seriously caught on fire here as we've gone to this read option. Maribel, man, they went for the strip on that one, able to fight through it and pick up five on that first down. We're now inside the red zone. Play action on second and five, and... Oh, we break the sack. I got to get rid of it with McCall before we lose some yards. We are at a spot where I want to pick up a touchdown and nothing else. Uh, McCall looking to do all of that. Gets us the first and goal on the scramble. I don't like how much I'm having to scramble, but it's working really well. Five minutes to go. The offense is feeling it right now. They're going to hand it off. Marable up the middle on the halfback dive. Takes it into the end zone. Three score game with five minutes to play. I feel like I said three score but I meant three point. Anyways, we're not going to go with the onside now that it's one score and only a field goal separating us. We'll give the defense a good chance to get out here and uh, show what they're made of on, on a big drive here. The D has had a long time to uh, rest. 
here with all those possessions from the offense. Well, their offense has had a chance to cool down, but they pick up 12 immediately. And with them coming out in this five wide set, we know that they're going to be going to the air. The question is, can we do anything about it? They ran the exact same play. It worked again. Uh, not quite as well, but it's second and three. This quarterback has the... Oh, <laughs> okay. Very good completion percentage. Has to throw that one away early, and we have him in a third and one all of a sudden. We're going to bring the pressure as quickly as we can. Although they go over the middle, they find Virgil, and they get the first down. This is one of those drives that really starts to uh, hurt the longer it goes on as they just continue to do well. Quarterback scrambling. We're looking for the strip on this one. Not getting it. He gets the, the full first down with that big stiff arm. Jeez. We're calling the exact same blitz again because it worked well. We just couldn't quite contain him. I liked the odds of it as they are going to the air. Man wide open and he's into the end zone. Oh, all right. It's going to have to be back to the onside kicks because we need to recover one if the defense can't get a stop. I would have never thought that we would be scoring so many points in this. Whoever took the over definitely chose right on this game. Diggs it would be miraculous if he could take one to the house for us. And oh, no. It was a bad return. So 3.55 to go. We got a lot of work to do. We have had some big plays so far in this game. Can we get some more? Latushko, quick four yards, gets out of bounds. We'll see if we can uh, beat them. There's Latushko again, but he drops it. Oh, he was too worried about staying in bounds. Couldn't hold on to the catch. Definitely seems like we need a new possession receiver on this squad because a lot of guys having problems. Big blitz coming. We're looking for Javon Hiley. The timing route, he can't hold on through the contact. So it's fourth and six with the game on the line. We're going to go for this looking to roll outside the pocket. There he is. Latushko holds on to that one. A lot of room to go, and he's at the 45-yard line. Oh, all too close on that. Trying to save as much clock as we can. 335 left in the game. They're bringing a little pressure over the middle. We have Isaiah Likely. He holds on to it through the contact, and that's another 16 yards. I know that eventually they're going to get make a mistake with the safeties. His, oh, we just barely missed Likely on what would have been another big catch. We go to the air on this second and two. Throwing up a bomb. This is risky. Sam Denmark. <laughs> Into double coverage. Not even close. That would have been an end to the game. Uh, would have been our hat trick on the interceptions. As we will go to the air here. We find Denmark. He holds on to that one and gets a couple yards. And he fumbles the ball. How was he knocked down? They're going to pick it up. McCall needs to get the stop. He knocks him out of bounds. This has to get overturned. There's no way that Sam Denmark wasn't on the ground. There is a holding on the return, but... Uh, or no, it's on us. I just don't see how you don't overturn this. The refs aren't going to automatically look at it. We got to go in here and challenge this play. I just don't see how Denmark wasn't down. He was just so close to being down for so long. Yeah, it, it, that has to be overturned. <laughs> Where's the ball? His elbows down, his, his knees down. Oh my gosh, we had a successful challenge. Throw the red flag, it works out, and it's a first down for us now. We are now inside the 25, getting the ball back after the refs make the mistake, and we're going to throw in, I guess, just out of bounds towards Javon Hiley. Three minutes on the clock now. This is so important that we do well. We'll give it to Maribel. I don't expect a lot, but it's a positive yard. And that was yeah, very mediocre. This gives us a third and nine to work with. Unfortunately, the clock moving. We're waiting for Cameron Brown to come back. I'm looking for Sam Denmark on this one. Oh, that was a terrible throw. He actually got to it, but just dropped it. It wasn't really through the contact, but now it's fourth and nine. I feel like we have to go for this one. They're bringing some pressure. Throwing it up. Latushko holds on to that one through the contact. How was that not a pick? It's a first down. I didn't mean to call the slip screen, but we don't have time to uh, fix that, so we'll go with it. Marable gets a block, gets forward. It's second and three now inside the five, but the clock's ticking. On second and three, there's Latushko in the end zone. He holds on to it. <laughs> Back to a three-point game, 2-11 on the clock. And with not a whole lot to work with, we're back to the onside kick. 
I like the amount of power. Biscardi put it in a good spot. Oh, it was a beautiful bounce. That's exactly how you want it. It just is too easily held on to by Thomas Hennigan. So with 2.10 to go, the defense absolutely has to get a stop here. It's an okay first down as uh, we're going to take our first time out. 2.03, second and six. I am a little bit worried that they're going to go to the air on this, although that looks like a draw. Gallagher, oh my gosh, how do I miss that? It's an easy first down. He's still on his feet, and it's a first and goal for App State. So I'm not going to take that second time out there because the clock did stop with the first down, so it saved us a little bit of time as we will start to bring the blitz. And we know where the ball is going to go. Can we hold him to the field goal? Second and goal. And 24 to go. This is not great news for us, but we will go with the engage eight on this second down. Mats needs to get there, stops him. It's third and goal. We take the timeout. There's still a chance. One stop, and this could be good. They run it right up the middle. Oh, we met him there. Zach Crosby, the tight end with the run. Oh, that was. I, I wasn't quite prepared for how quickly they snapped that. And it's back to 10 points. If we get those two interceptions back, this is an entirely different ball game. Unfortunately, with a minute and 18, down 10, we will need uh, a miracle. Diggs trying to provide that gives us a good return. But now we need to score and get an onside kick and then score again to keep this game alive. No timeouts means that we need to be moving pretty quick on this one as... There's Hiley for a quick first down. That'll stop the clock. We go to the air again. Hiley kind of on another timing route. Oh, I thought maybe I could beat that guy. 19 yards and he gets out of bounds. So that'll stop the clock for us. Just uh, over a minute left. We're throwing one up for Hiley. Back of the end zone. That's too far. Nobody had a chance to get that one. Second and 10. Over the middle. We have Likely. Isaiah Likely with the first and goal. 53 seconds to go. It's incredibly risky, but we're going to be looking for the mid-screen. Snap the ball, please. Grayson, what are you doing? The mid-screen, we find Sam Denmark. He holds on to it, and he's into the end zone. We've set a score record for passing yards in the game with Grayson McCall. It's back to a three-score or a three-point lead or deficits, and if with, with an onside kick, we could win this. So it all comes down to this. If we recover the onside kick, we have a chance to win a force overtime otherwise it's ggs to the rivals decent amount of power maybe a little bit lower than i would want and it's recovered by wells so nothing that we can do here uh, short of an absolute miracle victory formation coming out here for appalachian state they're going to take the knee and unfortunately in the rivalry game that's going to be all she wrote uh, i assume they'll run one more play here we, we tried our best. We did a decent job, but with the interceptions at the end of the day, it just wasn't quite enough. Very resilient for the team to keep in this one. <laughs> An incredibly high scoring game for us uh, against a very good, uh, better than their record shows App State, who is now bowl eligible. Disappointing. Uh, we, we come back from the road uh, with, a, with a sad loss back to back for us now. And if you take plays like this, just off the table how much different does it look you hate to see it man just like real life oregon state beats the ducks in the game formerly known as the civil war um <laughs> 66 to 63 look at the second quarter points 28 to 21 outscored there two nothing uh for the mountaineers on turnovers they destroyed us or we destroyed them in time of possession just because we had the ball for so long in that second half, but it's just not enough. Uh, they rush for more than us. Both teams passing for a ridiculous amount, but at the end, we just can't get it done. Players of the game, Grayson McCall, actually kind of deserving. Yes, he had the two picks, but seven total touchdowns, 417 yards through the air on a 29 of 46 passing day. Uh, 13 carries, almost rushed for 100 yards, but just couldn't couldn't quite get it done. Shamar John Charles, however you say that, the corner for Appalachian State. Massive game for him. Two interceptions came close to a third. And uh, I mean, those two picks really did enough for the Mountaineers to, to stay ahead in this one. We recovered an onside kick. We couldn't get to. 
and at the end of the day we put ourselves in a hole that we just couldn't quite dig ourselves out of so we can advance the week here our final game before maybe playing in the conference championship arkansas state we're now three or eight and three and i'm not sure maybe we pick up a recruit to you know soften the blow a little bit but we'll, we'll see what happens here all right couple guys scheduled to visit a uh, lot of recruiting battles going on for the guys that we are still fighting for um but all in all nobody commits elsewhere so that's good decent amount of xp including a ncaa player of the week so we'll go into an arkansas state team or arkansas state game they'll come to us our final game our final home game they're four and seven how about this though players of the week could it be that it's a true ncaa player of the week for grayson mccall it is the fred shirt freshman uh, up there for the entire country. How about in the conference? Yeah, Shamar Jean Charles with those two picks. <laughs> so a big game. Sees uh, each team with a representative as player of the week for the conference. In the top 25, we had some crazy stuff. Clemson loses to South Carolina. So North Carolina, the only undefeated team left in the country. They move up to number one. All the first place votes going their way. Uh, but it wasn't just the former number one Clemson losing. We had number 10 Auburn losing to Bama. We had Penn State and Oregon losing to Michigan State and Oregon State. And then dropping out was number seven Notre Dame, UCF, Western Kentucky, and Virginia Tech. So uh, kind of a crazy week there when we just see all these losses. I mean, look at that. South Carolina, seven and five, cracking that top 25. Not really that far above uh, 500. And then how about Northwestern now? In 12th, 8-4 on the season. That's insane. As we take a quick look here, again, it seems like this one could go either way. Arkansas State probably going to play us pretty tight, considering uh, how we've gone. And yeah, a couple of overtime losses. They went on a big losing streak there in the middle of the season. Um, not the closest games, but still, you know, only a couple scores. They had three of these losses decided either in overtime or, or four of them, I should say, either in overtime or by one score or less. Uh, and they just lost to a now ranked Georgia Southern, who's 9 and 2, 28 to 38. They'll finish the season against us. I do want to see how important will this game be as we look at the conference standings in terms of a conference championship. We are still on top of Georgia Southern, both of us 6 and 2 in conference, but we hold the tiebreaker over the uh, Eagles there. So that's good news for us. Uh, if we win out here, we're going to be looking pretty solid. But that's, you know, the easier said than done right now on a two-game losing streak. That'll be it for this episode, though. Uh, goodness, I, I really thought I was going to pull that one out after we got the first onside kick. Just couldn't quite get there. Thank you guys so much for watching, though. It means a ton. If you liked the video, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see some more content. Head on over to twitch.tv slash goonmaster if you want to see us uh, do some games, some sports games, NCAA, FIFA, uh, all that sort of stuff, and 2K live over there. Again, that's twitch.tv slash goonmaster. And if you have any thoughts about how this game went or maybe, uh, maybe what we could have done better, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. But regardless, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.